The Inca Prime 20,000 and its larger sibling, the 27650, are two of my favorite power banks for 2024. If you haven't seen it, I did a video about these two devices a couple months back where I took the larger of these two with me on a 36 hour trip and then left my charger for all of my devices at home while managing to keep my multiple phones, laptop, and even my headphones all charged up until I got back. Since then, I've gotten a lot of questions about these two power banks. So today, I'm gonna to be following up with this video to answer as many of those questions as I hopefully can to help you decide if either of these two power banks are the right fit for you. But before we do that, I'd like to remind you to like this video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do have any questions about the 27650 or its smaller sibling, feel free to drop those in the comments. Okay, so let's jump in with the very first question, which is, do either of these two devices make any sound while charging, even just a low pitched noise? The answer to that question is an obvious no. This question may sound a little bit weird since most smaller devices like these power banks and smartphones, laptops, typically don't make any noise while charging, but there are a handful of batteries that are roughly this capacity that do have built-in fans to help with heat dissipation while they charge. The Anchor Prime 20,000 and the 27650 don't have a fan on the inside and make absolutely no sound while charging when on the charging base itself or over USB-C at the top. On to question number two. I need to charge my Galaxy S24 Ultra. Should I go with the smaller or larger Anchor Prime battery? That's actually a great question. I actually have the Galaxy S24 Ultra and I've used it with both of these batteries. They do deliver the 45 watt fast charging speeds that Samsung uses on its flagship tier device. It honestly just comes down to how many times you wanna charge the 5,000 milliamp hour battery that's on the inside of the phone. The 20,000 milliamp version would be able to go about three and a half times, maybe a little bit more when charging the phone from zero to 100%, while the larger 27650 would be able to do that four and a half times. So it honestly comes down to how many times you wanna be able to do that without having to charge the battery back up. Next up, is the charging base worth the extra cost since you can charge both of these batteries over USB-C? That's a little bit of a judgment call for you to make. With the charging base, it might seem a little bit pricey at $70, but just keep in mind that it also delivers 100 watts of fast charging on its own without the battery itself, with the two USB-C ports on the side and also the USB-A port. I use this all the time to charge up the various devices on my desk and smartphones, but it's also nice knowing that your Anchor Prime power bank is always gonna be charged anytime that you need it since you simply set it right on the top and it takes care of charging without you having to plug it in and remember to do that every time that you use it. So that's one's up to you. This next question, while it's not specific about the battery, I think it's really important. What cables do you use to charge your smartphones or laptops? And sometimes I notice really slow charging speeds. Those charging speeds are actually probably more related to the cables themselves than anything else and nothing to do with the batteries themselves. My recommendation is always to make sure that when you're buying USB-C cables, you look at the description closely and make sure they deliver at least 100 watts of power throughput or even higher than that. I'm gonna have a couple links in the video description for different cables that you should probably check out. The next question, can I recharge the 250 volt power bank using both USB-C cables at the same time? And the answer for that is yes. The Anchor Prime 27650 can charge at up to 170 watts through the two USB-C ports at the top, as long as you have chargers that can deliver that much power. If you use the charging base, you can also charge the unit at 100 watts, which is a little bit slower, but honestly, it's a lot faster than most other power banks that are out there. Up next, I'm a photographer and I carry along a, a lot of extra batteries when I'm out taking pictures. Can this battery charge up the extra batteries with my power adapters? The Anchor Prime power bank does not have an AC charging capability. Most mirrorless cameras though do have a USB-C port that allow you to plug in directly to the Anchor Prime. But if you're looking to power those additional batteries outside of the camera itself, some of these additional camera batteries do have adapters or third-party adapters that you can buy to plug in via USB-C that you would be able to then plug in directly to the Anchor Prime battery bank. If you pick up one of those adapters, you'll definitely be able to power everything that that you need with the Anchor Prime battery banks without any issues or complications. So I would say definitely. 
Now this question I've gotten a couple of times on my previous video, so I definitely wanna answer it. Isn't the 27650 Anchor Prime battery too large to take onto an airplane? There seems to be a little bit of confusion regarding how large of a battery that the FAA allows onto a plane before it needs to be declared with the airline. There is some documentation out there that states the limit is 27,000 milliamp hour batteries. But the problem is that number is based on a specific voltage of the battery. The true number that you should be looking at is how many watt hours. The Anchor Prime 27650 has a capacity of 99.45 watt hours, coming in just shy of the 100 watt hour threshold by the FAA. So you shouldn't have any issues at all. And personally, I've actually taken this on eight different flights so far this year, and they haven't stopped me at security once. So you should be totally fine with this larger battery and definitely a lot more within that threshold with the smaller 20,000 milliamp hour battery as well. This next question is related to the one we just finished up. I'm wondering if I can take my Apple Vision Pro along with the Anchor Prime 27650 onto an airplane. The answer here is actually pretty simple. The FAA does state that you can take two spare batteries per person, and both of those can get to that 100 watt hour capacity. The battery inside the Apple Vision Pro is considered probably an included battery, so you would be able to take both of these batteries in addition to the Apple Vision Pro, and then in addition to a laptop, three or four smartphones, and any other devices that you want that don't have external batteries. So you shouldn't have any issues at all taking all the gadgets you want onto an airplane. With summer coming up, this one here seemed pretty appropriate. Are these waterproof or safe to use at the beach or by the pool? The honest answer is no. Neither of these two devices has an IP certification, so they are not rated for dust or water resistance. Like most not water resistant gadgets, you wanna make sure that you keep them away from sand and moisture as best you can, especially if you're going to the beach. My recommendation is to put them inside a waterproof bag if you have them at the beach, just to make sure to keep them protected from the elements. But honestly, unless you're putting them near or onto the water itself, they should be just fine. Just make sure that the sand doesn't get into any of the ports. Do either of the batteries have wireless charging? They do not. Anchor does have a whole lineup of MagGo batteries that do have wireless charging capabilities with Qi and Qi2 capability built in. I think the reason why they decided not to add wireless charging to the back of these is just because of the size and weight. These are honestly pretty much just as big of a phone and weigh two to three times more. You definitely wouldn't wanna put this on the back of your device to charge it up and carry it around with you. This is something you're probably gonna be keeping in your bag rather than in your hand. Okay, so I've seen a couple different variations of this question, but I think this one was the best one. What's your opinion about leaving battery banks plugged in, fully charged all the time? I have the same setup as you with battery and the base, but I don't use the battery that much, but I want it to be charged when I need it. Well, of course you want it to be charged. That's what it's there for. But it honestly depends on how often you are using the battery. For long-term storage, it is recommended to keep power banks and other batteries at about a 40 to 50% charge. But that usually means if you're only using it once a month or even less than that. Most batteries will discharge at about 1% per month, but most modern lithium batteries are far more resilient than the batteries that we had in our smartphones and laptops six to seven years ago that lost about half of their capacity about a year after, no, not a year, two years after we got them. With modern batteries, if you're gonna be charging and discharging this at once a week, you should be able to go about six to eight years before you notice any significant difference since these are rated at about 2000 cycles before they're depleted to 80% of their original charge. Next up, as the percentage of battery life is just a guess based off of an algorithm, how accurate would you say it is? Did the percentage plummet when it got down to 20% or anything like that? Honestly, I haven't seen anything like that or any steep drop offs and the percentage indicator has been incredibly accurate in my opinion. The percentages though aren't based off of an algorithm. It's based off of the battery voltage of the different cells on the inside here, which are then converted to a percentage number by the BMS. And I have to say, I haven't been disappointed or noticed any inconsistencies there. And we're gonna close things out with one last question. I have the gold one and it's better. 
And what do I see there? One, two, three, six exclamation points. I have to say that is not a question, but I didn't know that there was a gold version of this battery bank until I saw that question, then looked it up on their website. I have to say it looks pretty good. If that's your aesthetic, definitely pick one up. For me, the silver and black looks a little bit better, but you know, you find the one that looks better for your setup. And that's gonna do it. If you wanna pick up either of these two, the 27650 and the 20,000 power bank, check out the links in the video description for the best deals possible. Also, if you have any questions about either of these two devices that I didn't get to, feel free to drop them in the comments and I'll answer those as best as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. I'll catch you guys in the next one.